welcome to the Brock Interview Series with host Thomas S. Orwatt Jr. Welcome to episode number 90 of the Rock Interview Series. I'm Thomas Orwatt Jr. It is January 31st, 2024, and for this feature, I have Mike Fitz as my guest. Mike is a lead guitarist of the Boston, Massachusetts-based band Bad Marriage, which was formed in 2015 and recently added former Tesla guitarist Tommy Skio to their band lineup. During this interview, Mike shares the stories behind the band's catchy new single, Dangerous, their upcoming U.S. tour with rock icon Glenn Hughes and Enough's Enough, and their collaboration with Tesla's Brian Wheat and Jeff Keith on their 2023 EP entitled Artificial Mind. Mike also reveals his top five favorite records of all time and much more. So here he is, Mike Fitz. Before we get started, please subscribe to the Rock Interview Series. Hey, welcome everybody to the Rock Interview Series. And we have a great special today. We have Mike Fitz of the band Bad Marriage with us today. They're a Boston-based band and about to go on a uh, pretty pretty major tour with uh, Glenn Hughes and Enough's Enough, which uh, begins uh, next week. Mike, first of all, congratulations on getting a great tour. You must, must be pretty excited to be touring with a, a legend like Glenn Hughes. Yeah, man. It's, well, first, uh, thanks for having me. Um, but yeah, it's it's super exciting. Whenever we leave for tour, it's like we're in that area now. We're only a couple days away from actually leaving, right? Embarking on the journey. But uh, so it's we're, we're just chomping at the bit to 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 just go and and and, and rock and and get it done. But uh, yeah, I mean, Glenn Hughes is is uh, he's a living legend, you know, rock and roll Hall of Famer, and we're 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 great friends with uh, Enough's Enough. Uh, we did 22 dates with them in July. Um, so that was our, actually our last tour. Um, we, it was with the choir boys as well. And that was just such a, such a great time. Uh, we really bonded with both of those bands. So it's, it's, uh, it, we're, we're, we're really excited about joining up with enough's enough again too. So yeah, I think, I think it's going to be just some killer shows. So we're, we're excited. It's great too, because, um, I mean, a band like yours, I mean, there's definitely a buzz with bad marriage especially over the last year with the ep that you released uh and you have uh, the addition of tommy skio into the band uh formerly from tesla but 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 still is it open up for a legend like that i mean is it intimidating at all for you guys or are you just like you know you, you just you know are really looking for the opportunity just to rock everyone's faces off yeah you know um i think a few years back when we first started uh touring we uh got our got our first big tour with tesla and uh you know we've done several tours or runs or whatever uh with them probably fo over 50 shows opening for them and uh, i'll tell you that i'd say the first half of that you know 20 sh shows or, or so was definitely a little intimidating i mean uh you know not to get off on a tangent but tesla sounds so good and they perform so well uh, night after night um, it's a big task opening for them and their fans and, 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 you know, their fans know what they're going to get when they hear Tesla every night. Uh, they just know they're going to bring it and, you know, they have legendary songs. So yeah, us being an up and coming band, uh, trying to, you know, prove our worth, uh, in, in rock and roll. Um, it's a challenge that we love. So at this point though, uh, we've, we've had so much, uh, we've, we were, we're so fortunate to have, have, have shared the stage with so many great bands. Um, you know, we, we, we feel like we deserve to be there. Um, and, and I think it shows on stage. So I, I, we just were confident. Um, and, you know, I, I mean, there might be some pre-show jitters here and there. there. I think there always is. But the minute you hit that first chord, it all goes away. And, and you know, you know we, we just have a job to do. And it's just to rock and have fun and, and hopefully um, win some fans. Yeah. Uh, the band, uh, your band, Bad Marriage formed in, in 2015, correct? Yeah, it was, it was around there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, just, just recently within the last year or so, uh, Tom, like I mentioned before, Tommy Skio joined the band. Uh, so tell me a little bit about that. How did you get Tommy involved in the project and, and how have the band dynamics changed now that Tommy's aboard? Yeah. The, the story with, with Tesla in general and Tommy is, is such a crazy, um, but really cool story. Um, you know, I'll try and keep it as short as possible, but basically 
uh, you know, a little history, you know, for any listener that might not know is Tommy Skio was was a founding member uh, of Tesla. Um, you know, he was in the band from the very beginning. And I think he was in the band for about 20, 21 years. So uh, he put in a lot of songwriting and time and just, uh, you know, he, he built a, a legacy with Tesla. So post Tommy, right, when 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 uh, Dave Rude, who's, who's a great friend of mine as well, uh, took over, um, that's when Bad Marriage uh, started touring the, uh, with with them um, when Tommy w- was no longer a part of Tesla. So I didn't know Tommy when we started building our relationship with Tesla. Uh, like I said, we got to open for them several, several times on many different tours. Um, they're just a great band overall, great people. They really took us under their wing. Um, so that being said, um, Bad Marriage had a slot on the Monsters of Rock cruise a few years back. And Tommy's band at the time also had a slot. So they were playing the cruise and we were playing the cruise. And I said, you know what? I go, I have never met Tommy. If I if I run into him, I'm going to I'm going to go up to him and I'm going to introduce myself, you know, and uh, and uh, that's what happened. That was the birth of, of our relationship. And uh, it, it's ultimately what landed him in the band. Me and him became uh, friends. I saw him on the cruise and I just said, hey, man, I'm, I'm, I'm Fitzy from Bad Marriage. And, you know, I've heard a lot about you. We've toured a lot with your old band. And uh, we just started talking like two guitar players. You know, we started talking about guitars and, uh, and amplifiers and, and we just we just became buddies. And, and that's basically um, how it happened. You know, I ended up sending him a riff or two and. Or he he uh, he liked something I posted online, and so I ended up sending it to him, and he he wrote some uh, lead guitar parts to that, and uh, it really blew me away, and and uh, you know I, it just went from there, and he he ended up joining our band, so uh, it's a pretty crazy story, the whole Tesla uh, circle and, and our involvement with that, but uh, it's, it's it's working out pretty well. Uh, yeah, uh, your EP that you released in. Uh late last year um that was produced by uh brian wheat of tesla and and it's funny because i was um interviewing brian last year and he kept talking about you know your band and and how he was working with you and i was really excited about it uh now that ep is a five song ep do you guys expect to like have a major release this year sometime at all yeah well what you know now that you mentioned that ep that we've you know that's our most recent um, you know, release. We did just release a single with Tommy on it, but um, that EP not only was produced by Brian Wheat of Tesla, but it also has Jeff Keith singing on three of those five songs, which uh, was just mind blowing to us at the time. I mean, it still is. It's just Jeff, such a close friend to the band. Um, but you know, when when we stop and think about having a, a you know such a such a great voice and, and just a legendary singer in rock and roll. And for him to, you know, I always say grace us with his presence on those songs. It's just amazing. Um, so yeah, um, that's a great EP. And that, again, that was under, under um, Brian's, uh, um, you know, wing or, you know, he, he was the one who produced that he mixed it, he recorded it. Um, so it was fun. Cause up until then, I, I do recording and mixing and mastering myself. I've, I did everything um, before that. So uh, laying that sort of process, creative process and workload off to someone like Brian was was great because uh, obviously I trust him. Um, he, he's he's amazing at what he does. So it was a great experience. I learned a lot as well. Um, but uh, yeah, moving on, uh, we just released a single um, that uh, that involved Tommy. Uh, called Dangerous, and I'm sure you were going to bring that up, but that kind of leads me into, um, you know, we're we're debating right now whether we do another EP, you know, which may be five or six songs, or we wait and do another full length. Um, you know, it's tough today. I mean, as much as we want to put out full lengths, we do have two full lengths out. Um, we have our Bad Marriage debut, uh, 12 song um, album, and then we have our follow up. Uh, which has 10 songs on it. So, um, but they just take a lot longer. And, and we're at the point where we just want to keep releasing new music to our fans and any new fans that might stumble on us. You know, we kind of want to just keep putting stuff out. So the, the EP thing might be the way to go, um, but we're still undecided. Um, 
we 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 love uh, putting out full length, uh, you know, as well. So, you know, we're we're getting close to a decision, but we have been talking about it. Yeah, I definitely wanted to talk about the song Dangerous. Um, tell me a little bit about the songwriting process and, and that particular song. I mean, it's just it's a scorcher. I mean, it's it's a great good old fashioned rocker. Cool. I appreciate it. We really like that song. Um, that was actually the song. Um, there, there was a riff in there that I had posted. It's the bridge riff where Tommy's doing a solo. But um, I had posted it in the in the production, the pre-production stages of that song on my Facebook page or, you know, somewhere on social media. And then I said something like, hey, you know, here's a, here's a new song idea that we're working on. And Tommy had, had uh, hit me up and was like, dude, that, you know, something like that's right up my alley. Uh, you know, just he was just saying he really liked it. And and I just private messaged him or I texted him, uh, you know, and said, look, dude, this this uh, this track, you know, is is not done. Like we have the basic foundation, but it has no lead guitars. I said, so if you want to lay something down, you want to, you know, want to jam along to it, uh, I'll send it to you. And uh, long story short, he sent me back basically what's on there now, um, which he just absolutely sonically crushed it. And uh, and and that was kind of um, uh, kind of closed the deal. Uh, it was one of the factors that closed the deal on on him becoming a member. You know, we didn't just add him a third guitar player mind you we've never played with three guitar players uh we just didn't add him just because he's tommy skio you know it's like he, it needed to work you know it needed to he needed to gel with our band um you know creatively dynamically and and that and what he proved with that song dangerous was like wow that was a first like wow this this could really take our band um to another level um you know i've said it in interviews before i, I think he brings our our sound a little bit more 3d with his with his playing and, and his style uh it's definitely a little different than me and ian's style um and and different in a good way you know so yeah. uh yeah but that was basically the songwriting uh, process to answer your question i mean i had uh, most of the riffs down and written and and uh you know we we had the, the basic structure of the song and um and tommy had his way with it you know and sent it back to me and i said wow dude that's killer and just kind of went from there yeah for for the uh tour that you're going on with glenn hughes and i also want to mention that um you'll be playing uh uh near buffalo new york when you play in west seneca new york at rock and roll heaven and that's going to be on the 15th of february and and this is a, a kind of a unique show because it's uh with enough's enough and with, with you with you guys uh it's not a glenn hughes show so, right. so that's going to be exciting. So I'm I'm assuming that you guys are going to probably play a longer set that night. At least I'm hoping that. Yeah, you know, we're actually looking forward to those dates. I mean, obviously, the Glen dates are going to be bigger places. You know, some of them are theaters, um, you know, obviously just bigger capacity venues, which are awesome. Um, but as uh, as we're opening, you know, enough's enough's in the middle slot. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm assuming we're, we're, we're not going to get, um, a whole boatload of, of time of stage time. Um, so I am looking forward to those off nights that Glenn isn't playing, uh, that will get a little bit longer to play. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be going from like a really nice size theaters to like this really cool, like sweaty rock and roll, like club in West Sonica. And it's, it's going to be a great time. And, uh, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. That'd be my first show of 2024. And awesome yeah, that, man well, you gotta you gotta make sure you come hang with us and we're always you know just right around our merch booth and just hanging out so I'll make sure you uh you you say hello I, I definitely will i want to talk about um going back to the set list when you when you do perform with glenn Hughes. are you guys mm -hmm. going to be like like you say you're probably gonna I, I would imagine probably like 30 minutes 40 minutes maybe max yep. are you guys, yeah i would say 30 yeah are you going to be concentrating on uh, the EP and Dangerous, I'm assuming, are going to be in the set? Is that what we're looking at or are there going to be some? Um, you know, it, it's 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 actually we've been we've been really debating this because we we really like a lot of our songs. And when I mean a lot of them, there's not many we don't like playing live. Um, you know, when we write songs, we we kind of we kind of gear towards us playing it live. We want to be able to play a lot of the the high energy ones and, and what would really you know, catch someone, um, catch, catch their attention and their ear. So, um, you know, I think we're going to, well, I think dangerous will be in most of the sets because it's new. Uh, we have a video for that, um, on YouTube and, 
Um, you know, obviously it's the first song featuring Tommy. So I think that one's going to be in there. Um, as far as the EP, I think we'll play one song on the, on the, on the Glenn Hughes, uh, shows. We'll play one song from the EP. Um, and then, uh, you know, we have a great back catalog, like I said, of, of, of songs that we really like. Uh, we have a new one that we play, uh, that's not, uh, released yet. And we, we really dig, we really dig that one. So we're going to be playing that one. So, um, but again, we'll stick a lot more in, um, on the nights that we're with, with enough's enough. Yeah. Now, do you actually have physical copies available of, um, all your material? Yeah, we, so we have, uh, we have, so our two full lengths, we have, um, uh, physical CDs and vinyl. Um, and, and the vinyls have been a huge hit. Um, you know, we, we, we move a lot of those. We really, we really, um, put in a lot of, of effort and, and, um, in the artwork and, and just making the, you know, if someone buys something, they're very happy with it. You know, we have uh, great artwork and, you know, we just, we just try to do it right because, you know, when we bought things, when we were a kid, you know, for the, we loved, you know, how you open it and, and, you know, and just, just having it be special, you know? So we, we really, uh, we really stand behind our, our product like that. Um, as far as our EP, we have it on, on, on disc, on CD. Uh, we haven't um, done any vinyl yet for it, which we probably will. Yeah, and I, I do want to uh, compliment you on the T-shirt that you're going to be selling at the tour that you put on your Facebook page. That is a killer T-shirt, and I can't oh, wait thank to buy you. one. Yeah. Awesome, well, I appreciate it. Yeah, we uh, again, it's the same thing with when you when you're a kid and you you go to those concerts and you just see the bands that stick out to me are the ones that had these all these awesome merch designs and T-shirt designs and vinyl album covers and CD covers. You know, I'll never forget. You got you have some album covers and stuff and, and T-shirts just ingrained in, in your mind, you know, um, you know, like I had the appetite for destruction, you know, tape or in and then I had the T-shirt at the cross, you know, and so many Metallica ones. I just remember vividly and that that stuck with me. And, and, and uh, you know, we want to make sure we 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 capture that end of being in a band as well as having cool merchandise, because that's what I liked when I was a kid, you know. Yeah, well, well definitely you're headed down that road. Um, that's, uh, now you, are you guys actually from Boston, Massachusetts? Have you been there like your entire life or in that Yeah, area? well, yeah, in the area we're all, so uh, obviously minus Tommy, Tommy's the newest member. Right. He's obviously from Sacramento area where Tesla grew up. Um, yeah, we're all from Massachusetts. The other five, uh, band members, um, in, in bad marriage. Um, you know, I lived in Boston for 11 years. Now I'm about 45 minutes out. I think everyone's about half an hour to 45 minutes actually outside of the actual city. Um, but uh, we rehearsed there for many years. You know, we cut our teeth in Boston. So, you know, it's just easier to say like Aerosmith did, you know, we're a band from Boston. But, you know, they all lived on the outskirts because we all live. We all grew up in five different towns than each other, you know. Um, so we're a Boston based <laughs> rock and roll band. If, if Yes, yeah, want to be correct. Yeah, a, a, a Boston, another Boston-based band that I know you guys uh, toured with before is Extreme. Uh, they're currently on tour, and they just released a, an amazing record. Um, and Nuno is playing, in my opinion, I think Nuno is probably the the best guitarist out right now. Yeah, I mean he's he's absolutely amazing. Uh, well, um, we we never got to tour with them, but we did do. I think we did three shows with them. We did a hometown okay. show here with them. Um, we did, I think the monsters on the mountain festival with them. Um, and, and, and yeah, they're all so just so down to earth and genuine, uh, just very, very nice dudes and obviously super talented musicians. I mean, Nuno just blows my mind when I see him. I, it's just, he's, he, I call him an alien, you know, he's, he's not, he, he's, <laughs> He, he's his playing is just out of this world. Uh, it really is. He, he's uh, he's he's a prodigy. Um, but, you know, uh, to see that them still coming out with relevant material that rocks. It's 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 my hats off, thumbs up to them, because, you know, them proving they can do that after an already successful career is just is, is awesome. Yeah, you don't see too many bands do that, although some of the legacy bands, I guess we'll call them um will release new material and it always kind of seems like you know at first you're excited to hear it you know but then after you like listen to the while it's like you go back to listen to the classic stuff 
I think like as extreme with their most recent release, I think they kind of broke that because I, I couldn't stop listening to that. And, um, you know, that's the thing I like about bad marriage is the fact that, you know, there are a lot of new bands that are trying to carry the torch of that classic rock. And I think, you know, I, every time I listen to one of those new bands, everyone's hyping up. It's like, yeah, it's cool. They kind of, you know, kind of feel like there's some elements of it, but you guys right. sound like the real deal. You guys sound like, you know, you know, this was released in like, you know, like a, a late seventies, you know, record or something like that, which, which I really love. And that's why I really dig you guys. That's cool, man. I, and I do appreciate it. And, you know, we've been, it's, it's a tough, uh, it's a tough line to kind of balance on as far as, you know, being a, a, a total a hundred percent throwback band and being a, a, a brand new modern type sound. And, and, you know, like, I like to think that we we have a little bit of 70s, 80s, even 90s, and hopefully something new and relevant. But it's just me, and some songs are going to sound totally, you know, ACDC. Some songs are going to sound like more metal, like Judas Priest. Uh, it's just the way we write and, and whatever mood we're in and how, you know, the vocals get captured. And, and you know, it's just the song, the theme of the song, the I think it is a lot that goes into... Uh, what actually categorizes it but a lot of people have have said that we've we've um we've captured that that old school like uh throwback sound and and pretty well so hey i mean i'm not i can't complain you know and it's not like something we're trying to do it's just what comes out you know and 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 it's just if we all like it i mean we're we're pretty harsh critics on ourselves i mean uh so if we put it out we're we're pretty happy with it you know we try I try not to to put out anything that's kind of like eh, you know yeah one of the tracks that that's on the ep that i want to talk about is the a song yeah. 300 miles uh, that that's like a more of a ballad type song um can you just tell us a little bit about the writing process of that particular song and, and again I, i'm hoping that that song is going to be in the set list at least the show that you're playing near me <laughs> that's going to be a tough one just because we haven't you know there's a few variables that go into to stuff like that um, number one is is what Tommy is um, up to speed on. And I, I'll tell you, that song is just I don't even think we've rehearsed that song pre Tommy uh, for a long time. Unfortunately, not to, you know, not to bum you out, but we just haven't. Um, we do like that song a lot. It was the studio song. Um, I had the whole most of the, you know, that beginning acoustic riff for years um you know it's kind of gives me that zeppelin vibe of over the hills and far away um and i've always liked that riff and and um when we were first writing with brian wheat um from tesla he had you know when we were just just hanging out he'd say hey play me some stuff and so i whipped out my phone and you know i have a lot of recordings on my phone and uh that was one of them and 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 he said oh i, I think we can do something with that riff so we built the song around that um so that was just how that song happened um and uh you know jeff uh, as far as jeff keith singing on that one and, and all of them it wasn't even a thing all the songs were written um and then brian just kind of dropped it on us one day one day in the studio he just said hey you know what if we what if i call jeff and have him come down here and 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 sing on some tracks and we just kind of like laughed like yeah right like that that would be that would be ridiculous like awesome and uh, Brian made it happen. He called him and, and we had already been touring with with them for a while. So Jeff was like, I'd love to. And, uh, you know, a fun fact is, is Jeff, I don't think has ever sang on anybody else's stuff um, other than Tesla. So it's just something we we, we think is very special. So we're, we're just proud of, of Jeff even, you know, even wanting to do it. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the 300 miles process was, uh, uh, you know, Johnny wrote, I had, uh, I had the title of the song, believe it or not. It, it happens a lot, um, where I'm writing a song guitar, uh, wise, and I'll, I'll have some sort of theme in my head, at, whether it's just a title of a song or I'll have a few, few lines of a chorus and, um, uh, you know, I just hand it off. I'll say, and and uh just so, to keep to keep everyone in the creative loop uh you know johnny is a great writer he loves to write uh lyrics and poetry so um i kind of give him a, a a really good starting point and on that one i said you know uh this one's let's call this one 300 miles and gave him just a, a basic 
you know, uh, foundation and he went with it. Wow. Uh, yeah. I, I wonder like, uh, are you guys planning on touring with Tesla at all after the Glenn Hughes tour? I mean, I mean, that would be a great double bill. It would, but I, I don't think so. I mean, again, we've done so much with them. Um, you know, I don't want to say it's run its course, but we do, you know, we, we needed to branch out. Like we were, we were supporting them for a couple of years, um, which again was absolutely amazing. Um, but then we got, we did a run with Buck Cherry and that was great. And then we did, um, like I said, we did a big thing with the choir boys and enough's enough in uh, July, this last July. Um, so we're just branching out a little bit. Uh, this one with Glenn is great. Um, we're just kind of seeing what falls on our plate and, and putting some feelers out there to see, you know, number one, who's touring number two, if they need a support act, you know, um, and, and uh, we just kind of weighing our options and we got some great gigs after the tour. I know we're supporting uh, Ace Freely for a gig. Um, uh, what else? I think one of, oh, we're doing a George Lynch, a Lynch mob show. Um, uh, and uh, the art of anarchy with Bumblefoot. Yes, art of anarchy too, which which I'm excited about. That one happened really quick. Um, we had a show uh, at, at this place in in New Jersey, and it got postponed. But then that one popped up, so uh, we, you know we're going to support that one, which, which I think will be really cool. Yeah, let's talk about the Ace Ferrelli show. That's like like three hours away from me, um, Rome, New York, I believe it is, which is near, near yeah. Syracuse. Yeah, and not only is it Ace Ferrelli on that bill, but it's also uh, Angel. 70 classic rock angel yeah so that that's going to be quite a quite an amazing show so so okay you've opened for like all these great bands and everything but i mean ace Frehley. i mean that's that's a legend that's like a list legend i mean you yeah. must really be looking forward to that one definitely and and you know uh our drummer is a huge kiss fan i mean i like kiss um you know i i had bands that i i liked more everyone you know has their as their, you know, big ones. I was a big Zeppelin, Zeppelin guy. And, um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, to our drummer, it's super special. Um, he loves kiss and, and obviously to be playing with Ace Freely is amazing. And angel, like, uh, it, what we were talking about earlier with their album covers, you know, their logo is when you flip it upside down. So it's stuff like that, that just, it, you just, you always remember stuff like that. And, and, uh, yeah, it just popped into my head when you, when you reminded me of, uh, angel, but um, yeah, Ace Freely, it's going to be amazing. I know there's a, a ton of tickets sold for that one already, uh, so we are we're pumped to do that one too. Yeah, that that's uh, that's definitely a show that I'm really looking forward to. Now, you like we mentioned, you know, during the interview, you you guys have played supported a lot of great bands, and 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 I know you're not going to mention any names, but has there ever been a situation where there's been a band that you know they they they, they weren't a cool band to support? You know, I, I have answered a question like this before, but all I chalk it up to is is you don't really know a band until you tour with them, you know, like so we've opened for a lot of bands, but they, you know, we don't even with like a one off show, we call them, you know, so if a band's coming through, say, the New England area and Bad Marriage gets the call to support uh, the band and, and we get to open for them, you know, everything happens so fast that sometimes you don't even get to you don't even get to talk to them you don't get to to run in with them uh, uh to, to shoot the shit with them um and you don't even sometimes see them right there's been some bands where you know we we played with scott wyland uh, right before he passed away and uh everybody was just asking me for weeks that did you get to meet him what did he say what was he like i'm like dude i didn't even see him like i did not he's on his tour bus you know, strict regiment or whatever, you know, every, everybody's different how they do their pre pre show uh, routine, you know? So we were on stage off stage, you know, and there was a middle band that were on tour with them. And then he, he went on and they were gone. Uh, so it, it took me years later to realize how tour works and, and, and to understand that, you know, everyone's regimented. And, and if you don't see them, that doesn't mean they're not cool people. It doesn't mean, you know, they could be sleeping. I mean, they're like, who knows? So, um, you know, I hope that answers the question. So it's you, you try to give everyone the benefit of the doubt if, uh, you know, if you you run into someone and they're not as talkative or they're not. It just seems like they're a little standoffish. It's probably not the case, you know, and, and uh, I've, I've just I've come to, to learn that through experience from touring. 
Now I'm looking uh, at your your studio. I'm assuming behind you is that where the band rehearse, or is that just your own yeah, personal? Studio? Yeah, so it's it's where we rehearse, but it's also where I do all my recording and stuff. So yeah, you're probably looking at just the yeah the live jam room. <laughs> there's just there's just stuff everywhere. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Uh, well, Mike, I want to thank you very much for your time. But before I let you go, I want uh, I want to put you on the spot and uh, have you list your five favorite records of all time. Now, you mentioned many of your influences, so I, I'm I'm looking forward to hearing this. Uh, so, um, yeah, off the top of your head, what are your top five favorite records of all time? Oh, all right. Let me see. I mean, you have the Zeppelin poster right there. So, I mean, I, I literally could say five Zeppelin records, to be honest with you. I mean, I, I really, really dig them. And Jimmy Page uh you know was a huge influence on me but um um so i would say for number one or, or is this in order or just at any order if you want to start with if you want to start with like number five and then we could work up from number one. <laughs> oh god this is i should have been prepared for this um let's see number five probably say the first aerosmith record i, I really 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 love that one um, I even have it on eight track. I play it. It's just, it's just, and them being somewhat hometown boys, we call them, uh, you know, from the general uh, Massachusetts ish area. Uh, we take a lot of, of pride, you know, knowing that Aerosmith was, you know, roaming these halls, I'll say. Um, let me see. Number four. That's, that's a tough one. I, I would say there's so many ACDC ones, but I'll, you know, I would say one of it, I would say highway to hell. I'm a huge Bon Scott fan. Um, I mean, I love everything ACDC, um, but, uh, you know, that one, I mean, Back in Black, that whole album. But we'll we'll, we'll stick number four with ACDC. Um, hmm, let me see. What's another one? God, there's so many. Um, I got to say Rage Against the Machines, first one, um, just because I, I just, it changed for me, just hearing Tom Morello and 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 it just that whole record just blew my mind. Absolutely blew my mind. I'd never heard anything sonically like that. You know, I was grew up listening to the 70s bands like Zeppelin and Floyd and the Doors and the Dead and you know, all those 70s bands and Deep Purple and uh and then <clears throat> uh and then in the 80s when you know GNR, which is I'm gonna have to say Appetite for Destruction would be my other one. Uh, what's that number two number, number two yeah yeah so so rage against the machine just because it just it was groundbreaking for me just their sound nothing sounded like that um gnr same thing it was it was aggressive it, they weren't they weren't really in that hair metal category um so it just sounded just so sonically badass i have to say appetite and then number one uh, I'd probably say Zeppelin too. I mean, just cause, just cause, you know, I've been asked a lot, you know, what, what something like, uh, you know, what was, what, what first started getting you into the, the, you know, the electric guitar. And to be honest, I'll never forget my dad's jukebox in our old basement. And he had heartbreaker on there and, 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 it was, and, it, and it was the beginning riff. And I just remember hearing it and, and just it sounding so clean, but so heavy, you know, it didn't have all this distortion on it uh and but it just sound, but it still sounded so so ballsy and and uh i just uh, that resonates with me and that i think that that solidified my zeppelin being a zeppelin fan for life wow so. that, that that's a great list that that really is um I, when you guys headline do you play any zeppelin covers at all we do actually yeah we um we we do uh we do a medley um which is we do like a kind of a four song medley where we kind of weave in one and go in the other and the other. Yeah. Um, it's pretty cool. We've had a lot of fun with it and the response we might do that. Um, uh, at a couple of the, um, just bad marriage enough's enough shows. Um, so yeah, so what do we do? We do, um, we do the, we start with the ocean and then we go into, uh, the wanton song. Um, and then we do communication breakdown into a little bit of dazed and confused and it's just fun. Um, and we do we don't do the whole songs. We kind of do pieces of them. And and uh, it's it's just uh, everyone seems to really like it. And and our our singer, Johnny, really does a really good. He has a really good uh, Zeppelin vibe to him. Um, but, yeah. 
That's 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 awesome. Uh, when I'm talking on the fifteenth, I'm probably gonna ask you if you could do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you gotta remind. Yeah, remind yeah. me, and uh, we 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 might throw it in there anyway. So we just want to we right. want to make sure it's well rehearsed. We don't want to mess it up. All right. Well, Mike, again, thank you for your time. Uh, good luck on the tour, man. And uh, we'll catch up in a couple weeks. And uh, you know, stay safe. And I know you guys are gonna kick ass. So it's gonna anybody watching this, make sure you check it out. Make sure you get a T-shirt because they're really cool looking and uh you know buy a couple of the, the, the records and the ep and uh say hi to these guys because they they kick ass and they are the future of rock and roll awesome i appreciate it and um definitely make sure you come and hang out with us uh when you're there okay sounds good all right mike take it easy all right thank you Bye. see ya